down to Dresden, went by the courthouse and over the Chamber of Commerce, and we get a big surprise. You wouldn't believe the reception we got from Miss Dresden, Tracy Alford, a lovely young lady, pleasing and pleasant. She also brought along our court, Sherry Sellers and Missy Green. Now, you get a greeting like this coming to a county, you know you're going to stick around. They carried me in the chamber office, and there we uh, met Fred Rooker, Becky West, and Linda Shannon. We got over and joined in with them, and they invited Southern Travelogue to take a little tour around Wickley County. So this week, we're going to show you Wickley County. This is your Southern Travelogue. We'll be right back after a word from some of our fine sponsors. The Volunteer Express Incorporated with terminals in Dresden, Nashville, Memphis, and New York, New Jersey, serves the entire eastern seaboard as well as the greater New York area. The company handles intra- and interstate commerce of general commodities. This is the Dresden Terminal. The standard auto supply of Dresden has a complete line of auto parts for all your automotive needs. That standard auto supply of Dresden. The K&S Grocery is your friendly neighborhood grocery. It's home-owned and home-operated. They have a complete line of groceries at affordable prices. K&S Grocery. Now for a visit with Weekly County's most famous citizen, Ned Ray McWhorter. But before we could see Mr. McWhorter, we saw his secretary of 22 years, Madeline Pritchett. I'm Ned McWhorter. I was born and raised in Wheatley County. I've been a lifelong citizen of Wheatley County, presently serving as Speaker of the Tennessee House of Representatives. Uh, I'm proud of this county. Uh, I've observed the county over the last 20 years become a balanced county with agriculture and industry, industry providing jobs, agriculture providing a continuing income for our residents in the county. I'm particularly proud of the University of Tennessee campus located at Martin. It's one of the leading undergraduate four-year colleges in the entire South, not only Tennessee. I'm proud of the education system that we have in Weekly County. I'm proud of the, that our city mayors and our county, our county executive and our county court has been progressive to give the kids in this county an opportunity to have a better schools program and we have a thrust in Tennessee on a better schools program for the total of the state that fits well for the children this year, next year, and the out years for Weekly County. We have a good un we have good employment in Weekly County. We have a, a neighborhood concept that people enjoy living in this county, and I'm just proud that I was born in this county. I'm proud I attended the public school system in this county, and I'm very proud of the citizens in this county. Mr. McWhorter, we have heard possibilities that you may be running for governor in 1986. That is uh, certainly a possibility. I've been in the Tennessee General Assembly now representing Weekly County and Carroll and Henry and O'Bine at different times. Uh, this will be my ninth term. I'll be completing 18 years. And I am making plans uh, to uh, run for governor in 1986. I do not plan to run again for the legislature. Now let's go downtown Dresden. We went down and we met Mayor Strawbridge. We didn't get a chance to interview him. He's out of town quite a bit. This is a look at downtown uh, Dresden, the courthouse. And here's the Dresden Clinic. We were given a tour by Miss Dresden, Tracy Alford. Also the place where Tracy works, she fits eyeglasses. And then she carried us on a tour of one of the fine neighborhoods uh, in Dresden, a beautiful place to live, quiet, peaceful. And over to the home at Ned Ray McWhorter. Here's remodeling. It's another beautiful home. We have some fine escorts. One more pose from Miss Dresden, Tracy Alford. Thank you, Tracy. Then we went over to the Dresden High School. It's a beautiful high school, a large high school. In fact, it's one of the round buildings. Becky West carried us by there. 
also over to the uh, industrial park where we found Hall's printing is located, one of the largest printers in the United States. There's a lot of other factories at the industrial park. This is the largest. In the city park, they have a tennis court. Then we uh, run up on the Sherry Sellers, Cindy Hall, and uh, Missy Green uh, playing on the slide. And they got Becky to seesaw. Dresden is a very religious town. Uh, there are many churches. Here is one of their more beautiful churches, the First Baptist Church. And they got a newspaper, the Dresden Enterprise. We went inside and visited with all the employees. They're a nice bunch of people. And of course, you can see they are a hard working bunch. Enjoy what to do, though. You'd have to enjoy the newspaper work to be in it, and uh, they really enjoy it. It's, it looks easy, but take it from me, it's pretty tough. There's Linda. And we got thirsty and hungry, so we're looking for a place to eat. So we're on up on this gentleman uh, who just come out of this cafe, and we asked him about where was a good place to eat. Why, well, he said the Dresden Tea Room. We went inside. He must have been right, because it was like everybody in town just about eating there. They got good home cooking. And uh, we met Jim Blackman, and all his people made us really feel at home, and it's fine food to serve. If you're ever in Dresden, stop at the Dresden Tea Room and try some of the good home cooking. Now, let's go over to Gleason, uh, better known as Tatertown, USA. We run up on Mr. Bob Owens outside the bank, and he invited us in. The lobby was full. And as you can see, the people in the bank, this is a friendly bunch of folks in Gleason. In fact, I think Gleason is probably one of the nicest towns in all we Pound Boone, Miss Gleason, and even the record, city recorder, Pound Blue. She's not only the city recorder, she's also the city judge. Let's go in City Hall and talk to her. I'm Pam Blue, and I am the city recorder of Gleason, Tennessee. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about our town. Gleason, or Tater Town, as folks in many places across the United States refer to this comfortable community, is located in West Tennessee. Did you know that Gleason is the sweet potato capital of the world, the ball clay mining center of the world, as well as the home of 1,300 of the finest people around? Our park, located in the center of town, has as many as 25 different teams scheduled for baseball and softball during the summer months. And in the fall, our new kindergarten through 12th grade school boasts that the Bulldogs are number one. The Lions Club, the Rotary Club, and the Gazelles are working on projects to make this a better town to live and grow. The town is small enough to be friendly, safe enough to raise children, and large enough to accommodate new residents and industry. Mayor Jack Dunning issues a special invitation to visit our Tater Town. For a small town, you can't believe what you'll find at Lillian's and Gleason. Gleason, come by Lillian's Bridal and Flower Shop. Lillian has the largest selection of wedding gowns, pageant and prom dresses in all of West Tennessee. Inside this one store, you can complete a wedding complete with hats and veils that are custom made to coordinate each dress. Complete wedding service is offered. Flowers, the reception, everything is taken care of by Lillian. This is where Tater Town got its name. These are the bins where the potato slips are set out. Now we're going over to the potato patch to dig some real potatoes. I believe a girl as beautiful as Pam would pull potatoes, but she did, and beside that, she gave me some to eat. Great place, Pam and Tater Town. Now let's take a little stroll around Greenfield, Tennessee, another fine city in Weekly County. We don't only have a 
a great time. We've got a great mayor, Mr. Johnny Tharp. Uh, Mr. Thorpe didn't want to talk, but we went downtown and we found uh, a fellow by the name of Gene who, who did want to talk for us. I'm Gene Cottle, president of the Greenfield Industrial De Development. Greenfield is a small town of approximately 2,500 population located in Weekly County in northwest Tennessee on U.S. Highway 45 and I.C. Gulf Railroad. We have a mayor and alderman form of government that provide all our city services and have kept us in good financial condition while maintaining a $1.25 tax rate. The city maintains an excellent city park, swimming pool, and summer youth program. Our schools are modern and rank high academically and have a well-rounded athletic program. We have 11 churches representing six denominations. Our greatest need is for additional industry. We have several small plants, the largest employer being Kelwood, but additional industry is needed in order to provide jobs for our people. The city owns a 30-acre industrial park and has just completed a 30,000 square foot spec building in which we hope to attract a new industry to our town. Oh, uh, the weather was hot as you can see there, so we drifted inside the bank of Greenfield where they had a good air conditioner. But in order to let us cool off, but we found out they were a full service bank and a friendly bunch of people that work in the bank of Greenfield. Of course, if you live around Greenfield, you probably know this. Go by and tell them we was talking good about them. Thank you, Greenfield Bank. Hi, my name is Christy Esri, and I'm Miss Greenfield. This is a great town and we are state champs. We'll be looking for you so y'all come see us sometime. Well, let's drive up to Martin, Tennessee. We're looking at downtown. We met a beautiful young lady, Miss Martin, Lisa Davis, and another good looking lady, the mayor. I'm Virginia Weldon, mayor of Martin, one of nine happy towns in America. We have a pleasant community with an easy way of life, but it is the people of Martin that makes Martin so special. We have many modern homes mixed with many stately homes. We have a nice recreation program for the adults and the children of all ages. We had over 1,200 this summer playing ball. We have a fishing rodeo. We have uh, a new factory that is under construction, and we hope to have it open by the uh, 1st of uh, January. It will employ around 250 people the first year, and we hope within uh, another year that will be another 100. We have a, we're all proud of our, our town. We're working toward uh, homecoming of 1986. We have many programs on schedule, and uh, to get all of the community involved is what we're looking forward to doing. Now let's visit the Martin newspaper, the Weekly County Press. We caught them on a busy day, and uh, they let us come around and visit with them. And of course, we had to meet one of our old friends, Donna. She's been one of our friends for a long time. Good to see her again. Then we went out to the Hearth, a very unusual restaurant, and a fine restaurant in Martin, Tennessee. Got some fine food, plus some special entertainment. Wish I was on rock top down the Tennessee hills. Yeah, ain't no small dog on rock top, ain't no telephone bills. We met uh, Lisa Davis, Miss Martin, at uh, Westview High School. She was going to take us around and show us the high school. And uh, I believe somebody tipped the cheerleaders off because uh, they pretended they didn't know we were coming, but uh, they were all dressed out and uh, kind of act like they was expecting us. Of course, Lisa enjoyed it because she's having a little homecoming. She graduated from Westview last year. Let's visit Volunteer General Hospital. Place to have a family. So here's to the good 
How do you die? 20 years. The primary goal at Volunteer General Hospital has been to provide the highest quality care possible for our patients. To accomplish this, we have utilized the most modern diagnostic tools. and provided the widest possible range of services. But above all, high quality patient care means kindness. and compassion. And as our patients' needs change, so do we. Our birthing room and our outpatient surgery are indicators that we believe the best is yet to come. Keeping with this theme, we invite everyone to help us celebrate our 20th anniversary by attending the Family Health Care Festival on October 17th. See you there. Well, out on the Sharon Highway, I went to Ross's and son. They got us a little bit of everything, just like they say. He works old uh, seed cleaners and sells them to the people in the Caribbean. That's Ross and son. We found another place in Martin that uh, we had a lot of fun eating. That was at Hardy's. They make you feel welcome over there. We even uh, saw uh, Miss Martin there one day. Got a bunch of fine waitresses, and the food is great. Service is outstanding. That's Hardy's and Martin. Trial. Oh, we enjoyed uh, Buddy singing swell over at uh, Horace, so we're going to listen to him just a little bit more. Oh, I'm dreaming, babe. WCMT radio station was founded in Martin in 1957 and is the only station in Weekly County. Paul Tinkle is the station manager and he states that it covers the area of Northwest Tennessee and Southeast Kentucky. There are really two stations, AM 14 Country and FM Music 102 Contemporary. The station has won numerous awards. My name is Lisa Davis, and I'm Miss Martin 1984. We have a beautiful park here in Martin, and if you have time, come stroll in the park with me one day. We have a really enjoyable time here. Now let's go over to Sharon, which along with Gleason, we think is probably the most friendly town in Weekly County. They gave us a big welcome into City Hall. I'm Mayor George Bussard, and this is my wife, Glenda. Uh, Sharon is located in the southwestern part of Weekly County. Our population is about 1,300, and we have an elementary and high school, seven churches, and a city park. Our, our largest industry is the WSW Manufacturing Company and employs about 300 people. They manufacture children's wear and have been here some 25 years. Also, the Weefrey County Country Club is located just outside our city limits. It has a golf course, a tennis court, a dining facility, and a seasonal swimming pool. The club was established in 1968 and is located on the second highest hill in the county. We also have the Duke Community Homes for our senior citizens, which we're very proud of. The city of Sharon is served by U.S. Highway 45 East and State Highway 89, and also the Illinois Central Gulf Railroad. We told you we got a big welcome at the City Hall in Sharon. We also got a fine welcome over at the Bank of Sharon. John Clark and his staff was really nice to us. 
they're a full service bank. So when you think about banking, let the Bank of Sharon help you with all of your banking needs. They're just hometown folks with all this hometown friendly service that uh, you'll enjoy. So the next time that uh, you have banking needs, remember the fine professional and friendly staff at your downtown hometown bank, the Bank of Sharon. Go by and see them. Mayor George Bassard took us on a little tour around town, starting with uh, the American Legion building, then the oldest business house in town, and a factory, and a new home that is under construction. Robinson and Blue started the grain business in Sharon in 1949. They are now a government-approved warehouse with a storage capacity of nearly 2 million bushels. They have one of the most modern and convenient facilities for, for receiving and handling grain in their area. Cindy gives their grain prices on WKTA McKenzie Radio each morning at 10. Judy, the head bookkeeper, enters all daily transactions to computer record. RD is in constant touch with the market world. Patsy and Rosie are ready to weigh and sample your grain as it comes in. EDC Agri Center in Sharon has one major function. They custom blend and sell agricultural fertilizers to the farmer's specification. Their services consist of free soil samples, spreading equipment to rent, or custom application with flotation spreader trucks. The three permanent employees, Sue Cooper, manager, Bill Pearson, plant superintendent, and Butch Clement, operator, represent 24 years of experienced personnel. The construction crew of Weekly County Municipal Electric System recently installed an air brake switch on North Durham Street in Sharon for the purpose of switching and transferring load for the three substations of Martin, Dresden, and Greenfield, which feed into Sharon. In case of trouble on either of these three substations, the load can be transferred to prevent a major outage. When the installation of this switch is completed, it will be possible to open and close the switch from the ground. As you can see, this work is being done on an energized conductor. However, safety precautions are being taken. This is only one of the many switches that are already installed in the system. Miss Sharon Vicki Capps and her court Deanna Finney, Janet Lee, and Dana Lackey showed us around the Sharon Parks. Mount's IGA Food Liner is uh, unquestionably the leading uh, supermarket in Sharon. Mr. Mount's is uh, very friendly, has a snack shop go along with the fine line of groceries. Always outside in the hot sun working, two lovely young ladies come by and said, stop, don't leave, just wait a minute. I had no earthly idea what they had on their mind, but they came back out of the stank shop and they brought me a big, fattening, good milkshake, which I didn't need, but I gladly accepted it. When visiting UTM, we went to the administration building and met Ron Harrell, who does public relations for the university. He took us on a tour of the UTM campus. We visited the library, and of course it is large with lots of books which contain a tremendous amount of knowledge which the students use. Some of the students are Terry Davis, Susie Ellis, Cindy Gower, Julie Kincaid, Tania Hampton, Jeff Rader, Carrie Stanley, and Johnny Trainer. We learned that Terry Davis is the homecoming queen. Next, we toured the new and beautiful sports complex, which seats about 7,000 people. This is where the Pacers play basketball and where the concerts are held. As you can see, it is a very beautiful and modern facility. Some of the students helped with the tour. They also have a fine Olympic-sized indoor pool where they can swim the year-round or even train for the Olympics. Then Mr. Harrell carried us to the new Ag Center, which is built primarily for livestock shows and rodeos. What fun! UTM hosts a college rodeo each year. This building seats about 4,000. The seats are permanent, but the arena has a dirt floor. On our way to Palmersville, we passed Ned McWhorter's farm. 
Next en route, we saw an old steam engine and a windmill owned by Joe Rainbolt. In downtown Palmersville, we saw these gentlemen sitting in front of a gas station, and they agreed to talk with us. Well, I'm Guy Barber. I live here in Palmersville. Been living here most all my life. Saved me two years old yesterday. You know Ned Ray McWhorter? Yes, I do. I think a lot of Ned Ray McWhorter. I think he might be our next governor. This is Hillman Laws. I live here in Palmersville. I think it's a nice place. Where's McCurdy? He's got a farm right down here about a mile from here. And we think he's, he'll be a governor if he runs anyway. Yeah, I'm Thomas James. I live around here in Palmersville. I love to live here and proud of the community and everything. One thing I ain't proud of is I'm a farmer. And a farmer in the United States is not recognized. Gleason, or Tater Town, held their parade, the Tater Town Special, on Saturday, September the 1st. As you can see, a large crowd has gathered, and the judges are waiting. Now, here comes the parade. Sweet old man, so to pop, I still dream about that. 